Hello everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to find the centroid and moment of inertias of a cross-section using SolidWorks. So this is kind of uh, the same type of video that I made with AutoCAD, uh, but I just wanted to make this video to show the exact same problem and the exact same methods in SolidWorks. Uh, so if you open up SolidWorks, so you get a screen that looks like this, and we can create a new part where we'll do our calculations in. So the problem we're going to solve is the same problem we solved in the AutoCAD video. Uh, where we have a rectangular cross-section with a hole in it, with the dimensions shown here. And we want to do two things. One, we want to find the centroid of this figure. Um, and once we find the centroid, assuming it's this blue dot right here, we want to find the moment of inertias about the x and y axis at the centroid. Um, so we can do that with SolidWorks, just like we could with AutoCAD. So we'll go, we have our new sketch, and one of the first things I want to point out is one of the differences between SolidWorks and AutoCAD is that SolidWorks uh, has units and you have to create a file and when you create a file you you know make sure you're in the same unit system as the problem so you can tell that by looking at the bottom right hand corner uh, you have this IPS uh, which IPS stands for inch pound seconds but you can also choose between MKS which is meter kilogram second or all these other uh, uh, options as well but we're gonna stick with IPS because that is what the problem is in but if you're dealing with a problem in millimeters, you could just change it to that. So we will create a new sketch by clicking the sketch tab and clicking sketch. And we will choose what plane we want to create the sketch in. Now this doesn't really matter for finding the uh, centroid and moment of inertia just because we're not going to be making some big uh, part and complex part. Uh, so we can just choose the front plane. And we see we get a universal coordinate system. So we're going to start the sketch with the bottom left hand corner of the figure on the origin. Uh, that's the same thing we did with AutoCAD and it's important that we do that because we get all re we get all of our results uh, in relation to that point so we want to make sure we remember where that point is. So we'll create a rectangle, a corner rectangle by clicking here. If you don't see it you can click down and choose corner rectangle and then you can create your figure. And the great thing about SolidWorks is that you can just eyeball it at first and just get the general shape of it without even worrying about dimensions. So this is like what our shape looks like. Um, and we can see here that it's the same thing. But we know that we need to uh, put in dimensions because we see these blue lines. And these blue lines mean that the sketch is underdefined, meaning that these dimensions aren't defined so we can move these around all we want, uh, which is not good because we want to make sure we know what those dimensions are. So we'll click Smart Dimension and click this and we know from our, uh, these dimensions that this is 5 inches. Uh, we know that this dimension is 8 inches. We know that the hole is 2 inches by 5 inches. And there's one more thing we have to define. We have to define where this rectangle is in relation to uh, the origin. So we will define this as 0 0.9 inches. That's what we were given. And this as uh, 1.8 inches is what we were given. So now we have our figure, everything is black, which means it's fully defined, and we can extrude this. So to actually find the moment of inertia in the centroid using SolidWorks, you have to extrude your cross section, uh, which means bring it into 3D from 2D. Um, now this isn't absolutely necessary you do this, uh, but it does help when you have holes in your model and more of a complex model. Uh, so we're going to extrude and you, you can see here that it recognizes that this middle part is a hole. So we don't have to do anything like we did in AutoCAD where we had to subtract the uh, pieces. Uh, it knows that this is a hole and it'll account for that. Now it doesn't matter how far you extrude it because again we're just looking at the cross section so we'll just say an inch. It really it does not matter how far you extrude it. But now you can see if we go back to um, our uh, front here we can see that uh, or our front view we can see that we have our uh, figure. So the way that we find the centroid and moment of inertia is we click the face of the, of the cross section and we go to the evaluate tab and click section properties. Now section properties will give us all this good information about the cross section. Uh, one, it'll give us the area, which is 30 inches squared, which again matches up with what we got from AutoCAD. And then it'll give us the centroid relative to output coordinate system origin. Now this is, you have to be careful here because this is the output coordinate system. This is where we defined the lower left-hand corner. So this is in relation to the lower left-hand corner because we started the sketch in the lower left-hand corner. So we're 2.7 inches off in the x-direction and 3.9 inches up in the y-direction. And again, that matches up with what we got with AutoCAD. 
And then we get our moments of inertia of the area at the centroid. Now, uh, these are actually correct. These values are correct, but they're kind of hard to understand because you get uh, nine of them. Uh, so we actually are going to go down to the principal moments of area inertia at the of the area at the centroid. Uh, this is what we're really interested in because it'll tell us the uh, moment of inertia um, of the area at the centroid is what we want. So we notice here um, one thing that we kind of have to be careful is, of is notice how the x and y directions are defined. Um, for some reason SolidWorks defined the x direction as up and the y direction is to the side. So um, these are actually swapped from what we found in AutoCAD, uh, but they are still the correct numbers. And as long as you know that, okay, the y direction is really the x direction and the x direction is really the y direction, uh, you can just swap them and do that in your head. But again, these are the same values we got with AutoCAD and these are the values uh, that we would want when we uh, uh, answer the question. So. Again, uh, this is similar process to AutoCAD, uh, but it's a little different. Some areas it's easier, some areas it's harder, but it's just a different method of doing this. And again, you can print this, you can save it, you can copy it to clipboard uh, to save this information. Um, and as well, you can also save the part file so you can reopen this in the future and reference your calculations. Uh, so hopefully this helped. Um, you can leave any questions in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Um, thank you.